Good morning and welcome to Living Local 15. I'm your host, Jessica Williams. I hope you're having a great day so far and happy, happy Monday to you. You already know it's time. We kick it off with some motivation. Here's the quote. For me, becoming isn't about arriving somewhere or achieving a certain aim. I see it instead as forward motion, a means of evolving, a way to reach continuously toward a better self. The journey doesn't end. In our life, we have the freedom to evolve and to grow. You don't have to be the same person you were years ago. It's okay to reinvent yourself. It's okay to try new things. And it's okay if you don't like the things you used to. It's possible to grow out of a job, um, a relationship, or even a friendship. It's best to evaluate what's best for your life your mental health, and see where you see yourself in the future. Life is a journey and growth is a big part of it. Now on to today's show. First up, it's Money Monday with Foster Financial, and they are giving us great advice on how we can best benefit from the recent interest rate cuts. Then Perfect Pup is back in studio to share about the dog training technique called socialization. And later, our Best Reviews team has some great products for tailgating at a great price. Are you ready? Let's get started. Fashion, food, and fun. You're watching Living Local 15 with your host, Jessica Williams. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. Welcome to Money Monday with Foster Financial. Joining me today is Caleb Doan, their vice president. Good morning, Caleb. Good morning. How's it going? <laughs> it's going well. How are you doing? Good. Okay, so the last time we spoke about how the interest rates are being cut mm -hmm. nationally, and now we're going to talk about the fallout of yeah. that, or really how it impacts people's individual accounts. Yeah. And I know that this is a question that's on so many minds, mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, how do I gain a benefit for what's happening nationally? Right, right, exactly. And, and over the past couple of years, we've seen just millions and millions of dollars flow into certain products at, at your local bank, like yeah. specifically CDs and like high yield savings accounts or money market accounts, mm -hmm. because interest rates have finally been attractive. Yeah. You know, prior to 2022, you know, people were getting 1%, 2% on CDs, and so it almost wasn't even worth it. Mm. People, people were just kind of leaving their money in their checking account. Right. All of a sudden, when you could get 5% on a CD, people were saying, that's pretty good, of yeah. course. And so people were investing in CDs, now those are starting to, to mature and come due, and people are kind of faced with this decision, do I renew that CD or not? Because mm. interest rates have started to come down, and so they, they had previously gotten a one-year CD for 5%, it comes due, and now the percentage rate that they're offered is a lot lower, and a lot of times the maturity length is a lot shorter too. Mm. So they'll say, hey, you can renew this for... Four and a half percent for six months, or if you want a full year, we'll only give you four percent. Right. And so, since we are talking about CDs, let's get mm -hmm. down to the basics. In case someone's listening and they're like, yeah. you know, what exactly is a CD? It's like the magical world of banking. Like, how do these <laughs> yeah. products really work, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With so, the a uh, certificate of deposit yeah. is a CD, and yeah. kind of explain how it works for someone's account and why they would actually choose that. Yeah, so you have a certain face value that, that you'll buy. Let's say you know you put hundred thousand dollars into a CD. You put a hundred grand in. It has a stated interest rate, and typically that interest gets paid you know monthly, semi annually. Maybe it just gets paid at the very end of the term. And there is that certain term associated yeah. with it. So the CD is good for one year, for two years, whatever it might mm -hmm. be. And so you get the interest as you go along, and then at the end you get all of your principal back as well. Right. So you put in a hundred grand for one year at five percent. At the very end, you'll walk away with one hundred and five thousand dollars. Right. Okay. And and really the point is, if someone has money that's in their savings account mm -hmm. that's just sitting there, right, yeah. for for no reason, your money's sitting in your savings account, and then perhaps you would like to do something more with it while it's sitting there, but you don't want to fully maybe put it into an investment account. Right. Um, um, this allows for you to have kind of shorter terms because the, the shortest CD is what, three months? It, it kind of depends on the bank. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, three months is, is oftentimes yeah. what we'll see as, as kind of the shorter version of that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people set money aside for a specific, you know, 
big purchase that's coming up. Yeah. They know that their daughter's getting married in a year, and mm -hmm. so they'll buy a one-year CD, and, and when it comes due, they're going to use that money for, for that purpose. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, now people um, don't necessarily have access to those high mm -hmm. interest rates anymore, yeah. and so they're deciding, you know, do I, do I even want to renew the CD? Mm -hmm. Do I want to look for a different investment that can still get me that same yield? Right. And so that's that's one of the things we've started looking into. And so what would be an alternative for someone? Mm -hmm. So let's say they're like, mm, I'm not going to deal with the CD yeah. right now. What else should they consider? Yeah, so it, it certainly depends on the level of risk that the client wants to incur. Mm -hmm. if, if they want to keep something as, as low risk as possible, similar to a CD, We've talked before about what are called MIGAs, multi-year guaranteed annuities. That allows you to lock in the high interest rates that we have right now for a certain period of time. So maybe you can get 5% for five years. And mm -hmm. so you get that 5% every single year. Doesn't matter if interest rates change over the course of that five years, you've locked it in right now ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But there are people that might wanna move up on the risk scale a little bit too. So maybe they were getting 5% interest on that CD. Mm -hmm. There are stocks that you can buy into that pay a 5% dividend. Okay. And so yeah. that still generates that same yield that somebody was getting previously, mm -hmm. but now you also have the ability to move up with the stock market. You know, mm -hmm. with a CD, you pay $100,000, you get your interest, and you get that hundred grand back at the end. Mm -hmm. With a, a dividend stock, let's say, you buy $100,000 of it, you're getting that 5% dividend, and that $100,000 itself has the ability to appreciate or also depreciate with the market mm. depending on, on what it does. Interesting. So, so it's a little higher risk, but it's also right. higher reward. And for those people mm. that maybe don't have a big expense that they need to spend the money on, right. and instead they're just trying to get that extra return, mm -hmm. the, the dividend stocks could be a good way to go. That is interesting. Yeah, it's, it's almost like that, that risk of like, okay, yeah. playing that game, the gamble of it all. It's like, <laughs> right. what are you willing to sacrifice? Are you really willing to put a little bit more for mm -hmm. a bigger return? Um, and one thing, that's important too about the CDs is that you can surrender them, right? So you don't have to, um, you, mm -hmm. you know, you may get like a 10 year CD, but if you do need access to your money, you like pay a fee or something, or you sacrifice, right. you surrender the interest on it to get your money back. So yeah. it's kind of more low risk, how you're saying. Yeah, yeah, certainly. There, there's always kind of that liquidity risk a little mm -hmm. bit when you're buying into a CD. Usually you can get out of them early if you need to, but yeah. like you said, sometimes there's a fee or sometimes you lose a little bit of interest yeah. with that too. Um, with money market accounts, one interesting thing with those is that typically the, the interest rate is fully variable on those. Oh, mm -hmm. And so maybe when you put money into that money market account, it was paying 5% a year ago, mm -hmm. you're not necessarily going to get a notification that they're changing the interest rate on that, mm -hmm. especially if they're lowering it. Right, right? Right. They're, they're typically not going to advertise <laughs> that. So it's really up to you to make sure you're doing due diligence on that mm -hmm. and going back and saying, hey, what's the interest rate now? Yeah. And they might say, hey, it's, it's actually only 3% now. And so mm -hmm. now you just need to make that decision. Is this still the best place for my money to be mm -hmm. or is it better elsewhere? Yeah, so we gotta stay vigilant yeah, exactly. with our funds. Okay, <laughs> well, thank you so much, Caleb. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And if you would like more information about Foster Financial, we'll have their phone number listed below for their complimentary consultation. And I'll see you after the break. This segment sponsored by Foster Financial. Have an idea for the show? Want to find out how you can be a guest? Contact us at livinglocal15 at wayne.com. This segment sponsored by Perfect Pup. If you have the desire to get your dog trained, well, now is the time to take advantage of Perfect Pup. They've been in here sharing with us different techniques, and guess what? Don Kimes, the owner of Perfect Pup, is back. Hi. Hey, welcome well, back. Oh, well, thanks for having me <laughs> once again. Yes. Hopefully, I mean, the, I'm not overstaying my welcome. No, the information is so good, right? I mean, I think that people are really curious. Either they've had a dog for a long time or they're getting a new pet and they want to know how do you teach in a very gentle and soft way but train them well, right? Right. There's so much for dogs to learn and especially for pet parents to understand yeah. that they need to work with their dogs on that they might not even 
be aware of. Right, exactly. Okay, so today we're going to talk about socialization. Sure. And I've never heard of this term before in reference to dog training. So share with me, what is socialization? Well, there unfortunately is no Facebook or Instagram for dogs. <laughs> um, but socialization is a way in which each dog interacts with other dogs. Mm. And as you work towards a goal of, of your dog being calm around other dogs, that's what we refer to as socialization, the act of and getting them all together in, in a big group uh, and hopefully <laughs> have all calm dogs all around. Right, yeah, because you do kind of see that interaction. Pups are running up a hallway or at a park and they meet each other and it's like dun dun dun. Are they going to try to attack or are they going to bark? That's exactly or correct. Or will they play and kind of chit chat in their own doggy well, language? Well, you're always hoping for the, <laughs> the latter one, but we yeah. have to teach them that that's mm. what we want. Dogs that's don't come pre-programmed that way all the time, especially if you've isolated them from other dogs growing up. Yeah. Then they're even more reactive generally than uh, a dog that's been socialized at an er early age. Mm. So. Okay, so let's talk about some of the benefits. So going through the process of getting the dog socialized, what are the true benefits that the owner will see? Well, one of the uh, major things that we always work towards in dog training, just in general, is a calm dog. Mm. So one of the major benefits of socialization is you're going to have your dog be calm around other dogs Mm -hmm. and other people mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a little bit different for puppies versus adults with a puppy you can take the advantage and, and expose your puppy to a group of dogs where he doesn't know the bad habits just yet and he can get used to a crowd of other dogs and learn some lessons from the other dogs especially the adult dogs and believe it or not uh, the young dogs are learning from their older older siblings or other older dogs in the dog park right huh. That is interesting because that is kind of like humans. You have children and they look up to their older sibling and kind of learn behavioral things. They learn the good and the bad, right. unfortunately. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the socialization process. Like, how do you go about even doing that? Like, it sounds kind of complicated given that dogs can't talk. <laughs> well, one of the major things I would in in talk about initially is the fact that a lot of people put dogs face to face from the very from the very get go mm. and that's really not the way you want to go about it sometimes it works fine but the times it doesn't you're actually putting two mouths full of teeth together mm. so the fact and it, it could turn bad so what you want to do is a good butt sniff or a rear end because uh, that's how dogs go and they greet each other they smell each other's <laughs> um, posterior, so to speak, <laughs> um, but then, then, then they can go face to face and we can use chain link fences and gates, baby gates to help uh, a good proper introduction so there isn't any reactivity. Okay. We can also use some other tools, um, like I have right here, a couple of different muzzles yeah. because we want, to, we, we want to get the dogs together. We want to, the, the goal is to get them playing together and so they're less reactive to each other. Right. But we got to do it in a safe way. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes some other tools are required just to make sure that both dogs are safe, all the, all the people are safe, and um, hopefully... <laughs> your dog can, uh, can, can jump in a crowd and, and be just fine. Right, okay, I have to tell you, Don, I wasn't expecting the first step to be a good butt sniff. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> well, I wouldn't try it with other humans, but it does work for dogs. What a way to get to know someone. Okay, so let's talk about these muzzles. So sure. this one is a standard one that we're used to seeing. Very um, intimidating. It right? is. It's a basket muzzle. They come in this plastic form, um, uh -huh. and they also come with from in a wire form as well, a okay. metal metal muzzle. And these uh -huh. can be very intimidating, but are needed depending on the severity of which what you are. Mm. Okay, and then what about this other muzzle? Th this is the soft muzzle. And most people aren't aware of the soft muzzle, but mm -hmm. it's got a breathable, breathable fabric mesh, mm -hmm. and it, it goes around the dog's snout and it still allows them to drink water, take treats, and even pants mm -hmm. um, without being too adversive. Uh, they're still not going to love it, Right. But we can teach them that this is a good thing for them with uh, treats and affection when we put it on. Mm -hmm. And then it gives us an opportunity to put them into a, a more uncomfortable situation so we can show them how to be a good boy. Mm. Okay, so I thought that the point of a muzzle was to stop them from being able to attack, right, or use their teeth. Correct. So how does that soft muzzle work? if it goes around their sn their nose, their snout, right? Right. And not their mouth. So their mouth still can move a little bit, Okay. but, but it can't restricted. get wide open mm. for the full bite. Okay. So that's why they can still drink water and take some mm -hmm. smaller treats, but they're not gonna be able to, to, to chomp down, right. so to speak. 
Okay, so let's talk about this process of socialization. I mean, I know that you are an experienced trainer. Do you have any examples of like maybe someone you've worked with recently with yes. this process? Okay. Yes, I, I, I recently worked with a, a dog named Bridget, mm -hmm. um, uh, Australian Shepherd mix. And we went from a dog who was very reactive to other dogs, and, and men specifically, mm. but people in general just, just was afraid of them, uh, lunged and barked. It just was not a great situation. Mm -hmm. um, by the end of my nine-day training, we had her in a dog park on graduation day, running around with other dogs. Wow. Um, and it just takes time. we got to build that threshold. Right. We start from a distance, and we reward for calm mm -hmm. uh, behavior with, with lots of treats and praises, and we yeah. work up that distance. Um, using some tools like a soft muzzle mm -hmm. to help them get into that situation so that they can be become comfortable with other dogs and other mm -hmm. people. Wow, that I mean, nine days, that's impressive. Yes, wow. yes. Yeah. It, but again, you, you, you can't just avoid the situation. Just mm -hmm. like people, we gotta face yeah. those fears. Dogs have to face their fears too, but yeah. we take it slow. Yeah. We build up to the, we don't just drop them in the deep end. We mm -hmm. build up to it in a slow manner. And again, showing them every time they're calm with a treats and affection and, and earn that trust with the dog. Right. So that when we get them into the situation that they're truly uncomfortable with, uh, they will be able to be successful. Okay, so let's talk about the future results in a sense of how long does this training last? Like you said, it was nine days to complete it. Do you have to reiterate it later on or you, is it pretty um, maintained? I would tell you with anything that you're gonna work on with your dog, you're gonna need some repetition, okay. not just during the training process, but well after that as well. Mm -hmm. But I get the dogs to a certain point in which I feel comfortable turning it over to the right. owners so that they can take over. Okay. So the nine days, a great example. Mm -hmm. we, we, we accomplished a lot, yeah. but now it's up to the owner to continue taking the dogs out into public spaces so they can become less reactive. Yeah. And the reactivity uh, and socialization go hand in hand. The more I can socialize the dog, the less reactive I'll be, the dog will become. Mm. Hopefully to the point where your dog is even looking out the window and not barking at those dogs passing by anymore. Right. And that all is part of the socialization process. Interesting. Well, thank you so much. I learned thank so you. much today. I really appreciate your time. Yes. And if you have anybody that talks too much, I got a great tool for that as well. Okay. Well, you just leave those here. I know a few. <laughs> <laughs> And if you'd like more information about Perfect Pup, give Don a call. We'll have their website listed below and their phone number. And I'll see you after the break. This segment sponsored by Perfect Pup. Follow us on social media at Living Local 15. From the tent to the game, and you can't forget about the food, every sports fan loves a good party in the parking lot before the game. Olivia Horton is standing by with the top products for your next tailgate from Consumer Resource Best Reviews. The only thing better than going to a game is the pregame party in the parking lot with friends and family. Joining us now with the classic items that have game-changing updates for your next tailgate is Senior Director of Content Operations from Best Reviews, Jacob Popper. Jacob, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. You know, this is a subject that matters a ton to me. And <laughs> everybody who tailgates every fall knows they've got their own essentials. We want to give them a little bit extra, something a little special they can bring along for this year's tradition. Well, nothing screams special besides a tent. You got to stay out of the sun during tailgating. Yeah, you know, football season doesn't get cooler until a little bit later, so you want to make sure you got that sun protection. This one from Master Canopy is one of our absolute favorites for a few very simple reasons. One, when you're packing up the car to go over to a tailgate, it can load up pretty quick. This breaks down and can fit all into this one carrying bag, and it only takes a few minutes to get set up, so you're not spending all day Break, you know, setting it up and breaking it down, you're getting to the party a lot quicker. <laughs> I know everybody likes to hear the sound of that. Now, once you get to the party and have the tent set up, what about the tunes? Yeah, and so this is a this is a, a great pro tip that we absolutely love. We have been testing these party speakers basically all year, and JBL, which is what we have here, has a little bit different of a feature that I think is going to make for great at tailgate. You can sync these together, so you're creating your own kind of little mini concert. So if you're a family or a friend group that 
likes to go and get four or five spots next to each other, you can have the same music spread across your entire party compound out in the parking lot. <laughs> we absolutely love that. And this is one uh, brand that's usually on sale during big Amazon sales events. Yeah. They've got one coming up in October they just announced. So if you're looking to save 30, maybe even more percent off, wait for that event in October where we think there'll be some really great deals on JBL products. And that's right at the peak season of tailgating, everybody. So once you have the tunes, you need something to keep that beverage cool. Yeah, again, you know, I'm not going to tell you what cooler to bring for the, <laughs> for the uh, expert tailgaters out there. They already know. But this Yeti koozie is perfect for the grill master because, you know, you're standing out there, you're over the grill, drinking heat up in your hand pretty quick. This has got the classic Yeti insulation technology in it, so we absolutely love it. Stood up in our testing to be a great option and, you know, another, a great gift, too, for that grill master in your life. Well, you mentioned the grill master. What about a great way to grill with all of the food? Yeah, and so there's two options that you can consider here that we absolutely love. The first one is the Blackstone hibachi-style grill, which is for the expert chef, the one that wants <laughs> to be making all kinds of things, the entire spread all in one place. And then a different one is the camping stove, which you can bring. It'll have two different uh, fuel sources. And what's great about it is that it's way more portable. You're still getting your hot dogs. You're still getting your hamburgers. So depending on what level of culinary excellence you're bringing, consider one of those two options. <laughs> well, I'd love to know what level of culinary excellence you're bringing, Jacob. But besides the food, you need something <laughs> to set it on. So what about this table? Well, I'm more of a Blackstone full expert. You know, don't, don't leave anything <laughs> behind. But this is also just highly functional. It yeah. is a great table that you can bring full out really fast also can break down really small so check this one out as well just something super functional whether you've got it next to the grill or you can set it up next to the canopy next to the tent put the tv on it watch whatever game is on tv while you're getting ready for the game you're about to go ahead inside and enjoy yourself man you really have me pumped up to go tailgating thank you so much jacob thanks so much for having me of course to learn more or to purchase any of these products for yourself just head to bestreviews.com or scan that qr code on your screen Best Reviews is owned by our parent company, Nexstar. You can find more on the products and where to buy them on wayne.com. Living Local 15, proudly driven by the Kelly Automotive Group. Well, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, you can always catch up on episodes and segments of Living Local 15 by going to wayne.com, downloading the Wayne app, and also checking us out on YouTube. And I'll leave you with this. Evolving is a way to reach continuously toward a better self. The journey does not end. I hope you have an amazing week. Continue to grow and accept that. And I look forward to seeing you here tomorrow. Bye-bye. Content segments during today's Living Local 15 were paid for by these sponsors. <laughs>